One is, how do I help a friend who has a painful terminal illness or someone who's experienced a tragedy like the loss of a child or a spouse to know that God loves them in the midst of their suffering? Thank you. Um, I think the first thing that I would say to that is that sometimes as Christians, our pastoral instinct can be to rush to say, it's okay, God loves you. Um, and actually that can be difficult for the person who's experiencing very serious trauma, um, tragedy or loss. Much more powerful, I think, is what the Bible does, which is allow a person's space to articulate grief, anger, disappointment with God, um, questions about why this has happened to them specifically, and to be prepared to be with them on that journey, however painful it might be to hear those things spoken. Now, maybe that that person doesn't have those feelings in the place of, say, death by disease, that, you know, they're, they're a mature Christian, they knew it was going to happen, and they're, um, they're just very peaceful about it. I've experienced that too. But I think to rush someone to that point of acceptance is not biblical. I remember um, Os Guinness talking about um, staying with uh, Francis Schaeffer in his 20s. And um, Schaeffer was, was talking to him, praying with a man and his wife. He'd lost their child. And his encouragement to them was to articulate their grief, the absolute death the absolute depth of their grief, including whatever they wanted to say to God, however extreme and violent, and to sit with them and weep with them through it. And Oz said that really changed his life. And whenever he's um, met people who've gone too quickly to it's all fine, praise God, he's, it's all fine, that he's wanted to encourage them to take that journey through the Psalms, through Lamentations, um, through the scriptures of, of really articulating grief to God and that it's okay to do that. Mm. So, Absolutely. Um, I know that those who've been, at least uh, those who've actually rejected God because of uh, extreme tragedy in their life through the study uh, that I had, it seemed that no matter how bitter and enraged they were and carried that for many, many years, the only thing that seemed to break them, as it were, was coming alongside, being the love that they felt that they didn't have from God at the time of their loss. Mm -hmm. So it, it takes intentionality, patience, incredible compassion to work through whatever their anger is and to stay there mm -hmm. and to be the picture of the unconditional love they felt that they didn't have from a father before. I think there's also a very um, toxic idea that is, I don't know how bad it is here, that, but that is creeping into the church, that, that a healing or a miracle or an intervention is a kind of badge of God's love for you. Mm. And that a failure to be good enough to be a recipient of such a miracle or intervention is... Um, that it carries some kind of verdict of your lack of faith or lack of worthiness. And actually, that is so toxic and is so anti-gospel, is so anti-grace as well, where we see miracles in the Bible, they're divine signs of something more than just themselves. They, they're, they're showing people that, that God is, is real. They are never a badge of, well done, you've prayed enough, you can have it. And um, I think to, to make sure that in our churches we teach an expectation of suffering in the Christian life, that all the greatest heroes of the Bible in the New mm -hmm. Testament suffered and died young, lots of them, um, and that, that, that God is glorified in our suffering as well as in a triumph of a miracle. 
So where we do pray, where, where if we do pray for healing or we pray for some sort of miracle, what's the motivation? Is it for God to be known and, and to be glorified? Or is it this, this kind of um, desire to be validated in some way? Um, I really think we need to resist that in the church because the grieving person then also carries that, which is, is not at all, it's not, it's not true. And it's another burden that's laid on them. Mm. So. Yes, uh, it reminds me of Nabil Qureshi, a yeah. young man, a Muslim, a poly- well, he became a Christian, yeah. a powerful testimony, seeking Allah and finding Jesus is where he tells his testimony, but he was diagnosed a young man uh, with a stage four stomach cancer yeah. and prayed, and they prayed and faithful, faithful, evangelist and apologist for the Lord went all over the world with mm. Ravi Zacharias and to the very end was praising God and saying he will never forsake his mm. Lord and his testimony went through all I've never seen so much news media news press both Christian and secular mm. of his life so the Lord was mightily glorified and it's still hard to understand why that happened, but you can see some fruit even mm-hmm. through the tragedy. And his wife is carrying forward with his ministry now. Mm-hmm.